Hello and welcome back to Mental Math Edition. This lesson is all about learning how to find the complements for the number 100. Let's get started. Now, if you watched the previous lessons, you learned how to find the complements for the number 10 and you learned that complements are those two numbers that add together perfectly to make a complete whole. So for this lesson, we're going to learn how to find the complements for the number 100. Because again, 100 ends in zero, and these numbers that end in zero are very friendly numbers and much easier to hold in our head and work with. So if I can quickly get to the number 100, it's going to make addition a lot easier for us. And if I learn this strategy of complements for the number of 100, it can even help us in our subtraction, especially when we're working with money because there's a hundred cents in a dollar. So if I want to quickly find out how much change will I get back, I can use this strategy of compliments for the number 100 to help me solve those kind of problems too. All right, so let's get started. We are going to find the two numbers that add together to total 100. Now, I have the example of the number 23. And if I wanted to find what is my complement of 23, this number right here, the number that I add to 23 is the complement. 23 plus something equals 100. And this is the number I need to solve for, this complement. So traditionally, I could set up a subtraction problem. I could say, okay, well, I'll take 100 and subtract 23 and that will tell me the complement or how many I have left. So to solve this equation, well, we have a zero in the ones place, don't we? We can't subtract three from zero, so we have to go borrow. But there's a zero in the tens place too, so we have to go to our neighbor into the hundreds column and borrow from that one to start with. So let's borrow from that one, and we give one to the tens column. So now I have the number 10 in the tens place, but let's go back to our ones column. We wanna start with that ones column, and now I can borrow from that 10 in the tens column, and that gives me a nine in the tens place, and now I have 10 in the ones place, and now I'm ready to subtract. So let's solve this equation. 10 minus three equals seven, and now we'll move to the tens column. What is nine minus two? Nine minus two is also seven, and we borrowed from that one, so there's nothing left in the hundreds place, so we're done. Here's our answer. The complement of 23 is 77. 23 plus 77 equals 100. Or 100 minus 23 equals 77. This is the traditional way to find the complement for the number 23. But there's a much faster way to find the complements for the number 100. And it's a strategy that you will be able to do mentally and quickly. The mental math strategy to find the complements for the number 100 says that the two numbers in the ones column, this is the ones column, will add together to total 10. And the two numbers in the tens column, here's our tens column, will add together to total nine. There is one exception to this rule, and that's with multiples of 10, numbers like 10, 20, 30, 40, these numbers that end in zero, they will not follow this rule of adding to nine and adding to 10, but I'll show you how to easily find the complements for those numbers at the end of this lesson. Okay, let's go back to our number 23. Now, if I had the number 23 and I wanted to quickly get to the number 100, instead of setting up that subtraction problem, all I have to do is look at this two and think, what number do I add to two to get nine? And look at this three in the ones place and think, what number do I add to three to get 10? and that will quickly tell me what the complement is. Now in mental math, many times it's a lot easier and a lot faster to move left to right. I know you're probably used to solving equations beginning at the right in the ones column and then moving left. Well, there's no borrowing or carrying with a strategy, so all we have to do is quickly move left to right and we can quickly find the answer or the complement for this number. So let's try this one together. Here's our two, we're moving left to right. We'll start with this two. And we need to think, okay, well, the two numbers are going to add together to total nine in the tens place. So what do I add to two to total nine? Two plus what equals nine? That's right, two plus seven 
equals nine. So I'm going to write a seven here in the tens place. Now let's move to the ones column. There's a three in the ones place. In the ones place, these two numbers will add to 10. So I have a three. All I need to do is think, what do I add to three to total 10? What's my complement of three? Three and seven equal 10. And look, here is that number, the same number, 77, that we got when we solved the subtraction problem. But this was a lot faster, just looking at this number 23. Think, add to nine, add to 10. We add to nine in the tens place, add to 10 in the ones place, moving left to right. Now, I like to say, add to nine, add to 10, add to nine, add to 10. Just say that a couple times to get your mind familiar with how this strategy works. Now we're going to practice several examples. I have the number 54 now. I want to know what do I add to 54 to get to 100? Let's move left to right. We're going to start with this five and think what do I add to five to total nine? Five plus four equals nine. That's the first number in the complement of 54. Now let's move to our ones place. There's a four here. Think what do I add to four to total 10? What's my complement of four? It's a six. So 54 plus 46 add together perfectly to total 100. Look how quickly we were able to find the complement. 54 plus 46 equals 100. Now I could have said 100 minus 54 and done all of that borrowing and subtracting and I also would have gotten this number 46 but this way is a lot faster and a lot easier to solve in our head. Let's try some more. I have the number 19. Move left to right. Start here at this number one. Think, what do I add to one to total nine? You need to total nine in the tens place. One plus eight equals nine. These two numbers total to nine. Then we move to the ones place. There's a nine here. Think, what do I add to nine to total 10? We need to total 10 in the tens place. Nine and one equals 10. And the complement to the number 19 is 81. So if I'm at the number 19, I want to quickly get to the number 100. Think add to nine in the tens place, add to 10 in the ones place, and I can quickly find the complement of 81. And then once I get to 100, I can easily skip count like 100, 200, 300, or find the amount of change if I'm working with money. Now let's use this strategy of finding the complements for the number 100 to solve these subtraction problems without borrowing or subtracting even. Let's just ignore this number 100 for a moment because we know that 100 minus 63 will give us the complement of the number 63. So I can use my mental math strategy of adding to nine and adding to 10 to quickly find the answer to this equation. So we'll just ignore this 100. We're not going to borrow, we're not going to subtract, we're just going to look at this number 63 moving left to right, which means we'll start with our six and think six plus what equals nine? Six plus three equals nine. Then we'll move to the ones place. Three plus what equals 10? Three and seven make 10. There's my answer. 100 minus 63 equals 37. 63 and 37 are complements. If we were to add them together, we would get the number 100. Now you can see why we need to add to 10 in the ones place because three plus seven gives us that zero for the number 100. And then we'd carry the one into the tens place, which is why we only need to add to nine. Once we get to nine, then we just add that one that we carried and that brings us up to 10 and that gives us that nice round number of 100. Okay, let's move to the next equation, 100 minus nine. We're going to again work left to right. We're going to start in the tens place. Don't let this throw you off. There are no numbers in the tens place, but my strategy still tells me I have to add to nine in that tens place. So this is like having a zero. So think zero plus what equals nine? That's right, it's a nine. Then we'll move to the ones place. I have a nine in the ones place. Think nine plus what equals 10? Nine plus one equals 10. And there's my answer. I just found the complement for the number nine, the number that I add to nine to get 100. 
or 100 minus 9 equals 91. And this makes sense, right? If I'm at 91 and I count on 9, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. We know 91 plus 9 equals 100. So I can quickly find that complement just moving left to right, add to 9, add to 10. Okay, here's an example of a problem using money. I have a dollar. Let's make this a story problem. Let's say that I go to the store and I want to buy a piece of candy and it costs 84 cents and I want to know how much change will I get back? Well, instead of borrowing and subtracting, let's just use our strategy. Move left to right, add to 9, add to 10. 8 plus what equals 9? 8 and 1. And 4 plus what equals 10? 4 and 6. That's right. So here's my answer. $1 minus 84 cents gives me 16 cents change. So don't forget to put in that decimal point because we're working with money and your dollar sign. So this is very helpful when you work with money because even if you're not working with a dollar, if you're working with $2, $3, $10, $100, any of these numbers that end in 0, 0, you can use this strategy to quickly find the complement or the change if you're working with money. Okay, I told you there was one exception to this strategy and that is with multiples of 10, these numbers that end in 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. These numbers will not follow this strategy of adding to 9 and adding to 10. However, there is a really simple strategy, and you might already be familiar with these types of equations. Um, if we want to get to the number 100 quickly, if you look at this ones column, you notice 0 plus 0 is 0. So I don't need to do anything in the ones column. I already have a 0 there. And that's the number in the ones place for the number 100. So now let's just move over to this tens column. And if you'll notice, in the tens place, these two numbers add to 10. So instead of adding to 9, we just shift over one place value into the tens place and we're going to add to 10. So if you know your complements for the number 10, then you already know these because 1 and 9 are complements. They total 10. So 10 and 90 total 100. 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 9 is 10. And there's our nice round number of 100. Let's look at this one. We have 20 plus 80. Well, we know 2 and 8 are complements, so they total 10. So 20 and 80 total 100. And this strategy will be true for all of these equations. Find 10 in the tens place. 3 and 7 make 10. So 30 and 70 total 100. 4 plus 6 equals 10. 40 plus 60 equals 100. 5 plus 5 equals 10. 50 plus 50 equals 100. 6 plus 4 equals 10. 60 plus 40 totals 100. 7 plus 3 equals 10. 70 plus 30 equals 100. 8 plus 2 equals 10. 80 plus 20 equals 100. 9 plus 1 equals 10. 90 plus 10 equals 100. Well, thank you so much for joining me in this lesson today. I hope that you find this strategy very helpful. It might take a little practice to become familiar with adding to 9 and adding to 10, but just do that over and over again. Say that in your mind, whatever number you're working with between 1 and 99 to find the complement. All you have to do is add to 9, add to 10, add to 9, add to 10. Unless you're working with one of those multiples of 10, those numbers that end in 0, then you'll just add to 10 in the tens place.